Well, right now, President Obama is struggling to overcome the embarrassing setback to his signature health care law, but setting a new deadline during his weekly Saturday address to get the website up and running the way it's supposed to. His new target is the end of November. And in the meantime, the White House is scrambling to control the damage as the botched rollout is turned into well, a self-inflicted wound. Angela McGlowan is a Fox News political analyst. Radio show host Mark Levine is a former attorney for the House Judiciary Committee, and it's great to have both of you with us this morning. Thank you, the Jamie. afternoon now. Uh, Mark, I wanted to start with you and ask you, the White House has been very clear in saying that this is an alignment, not a retreat. Do you agree? Absolutely. Look, there were glitches when President Bush rolled out his Medicare Part D. The website went down. It took weeks to get it started. There were tens of thousands of complaints. It didn't even get started until November 8th, which is, you know, a couple of weeks after this week. And lo and behold, it worked by December 31st. And today, most seniors like their Medicare prescription Part D. In fact, Obama <laughs> extended the Bush program in Obamacare. So this will all work out just fine. It's a minor glitch. But, but Jamie, may I please add, Medicare Part D D is totally different, Mark, than people being penalized by the IRS by not enrolling uh, in Obamacare. And the bottom line is this, Jamie, the law is not ready for prime time, and that's evident with the website not being ready for prime time. The whole thing should be delayed. So you're saying it's the law as well as the glitches in the website, Angela? You're exactly right, Jamie. When you have Democrats joining Republicans saying that this law should be delayed, the president should listen. And even, Mark, one Democrat said that the president should man up and fix it. Now, I believe he was talking about the website, but the law needs to be fixed, and that's well, what members of Congress should do with the administration. But fix let me it. take a step back, Angela, because yeah. you have said that you believe that this law is all about politics, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of people out there that don't have insurance yes. that have been successful maybe yes. it took a little longer or they couldn't figure it out immediately but there are some people that are getting coverage that wouldn't have had it otherwise how can you argue against that but how many people is that Jamie we don't know I mean this it's president millions. well how do we know it's millions because this presidency is supposed to be the most pan tr transparent presidency but we don't know those numbers so we're saying that people are enrolling but are they should like we North, mark North have Dakota. more specifics on this well we know that 700,000 people have set up an application and we also know they have until December 15th to do it there have been glitches in the website it will take more time look I tried to get in myself on October 1st uh -huh. couldn't get in I did get in on October 13th I set it up but I went in just before this uh, broadcast. I went in quickly. I went in in a minute. I saw a bunch of different plans. I'm excited because they all provide me more coverage <laughs> than my current plan at a cheaper cost. I can't wait to enroll for Obamacare, but I know I have time. I have till December 15th. Mark, what are the chances, and then I'd love to know from you, Angela, that people, because the penalties are not all that stiff, will get so frustrated that rather than signing up for Obamacare, they'll just pay the penalty. And how will that help our government, Mark? Well, look, I don't think many people will do that. I think you're really foolish if you think you're never going to get sick. I mean, I guess there's some people who think they're invincible until they're hit by a car. But either you're foolish or you're a moocher. You're someone that says, you know what, if I get sick, I'll just go to the emergency room and make other Americans pay for it. This is all about personal responsibility. Well, the vast majority of treated, Americans know though, they need health care insurance. If you, show up, you, if you show up in an emergency room, citizen or not, you mm -hmm. will get treated. Mm -hmm. Is that part of the system broken? Well, the, the I think that part of the system is broken. I'm sorry, maybe that was going to Angela. Well, no, but that's I, fine, Angela. I, well, no, I think I think the entire system is broken regarding Obamacare. But to answer your question, Jamie, some of those people in 2012, the census told us that 48 million Americans were not insured. Some of those people are young folks that choose not to be insured. So uh, those IRS penalties are supposed to actually help pay for the law. I think that certain people are not going to enroll and they will be penalized. Angela, would you ever recommend someone not getting health insurance or not getting fire insurance or not getting car insurance I'm not it's a foolish thing to do I'm not recommending it did I say that I recommended that Jamie no, asked but you the question of how the IRS penalties would play and I was answering a question but no I believe that all should be insured but it should be your choice it should not, not be a mandate from the federal government that is unconstitutional even though the Supreme Court said it wasn't I believe it is the government shouldn't force you to buy something Mark 
Well, Mark, you, you knew you were going to make me take out my constitution when you say something's unconstitutional. I can, I can, we could go into the reasons the Supreme Court found it constitutional, but we don't have to do that. It's already been resolved. Look, you should get health care insurance, just like people should have fire insurance and car insurance, just like we pay taxes to pay for a police force, even if I don't use the police but force. But let me ask you this one question, Mark, before normal. I let you go. During the period of time that this did go up to the Supreme Court, and we know that doesn't happen overnight. <laughs> How much work was being done to get this website ready? Or was the administration just sitting back and saying, you know what, we're not going to deal with this until we know for sure it's going? Well, you're absolutely right that they didn't have enough time to get the website ready. One of the no, main I didn't reasons say that. is because... Did you say I said they didn't have enough time? They didn't. Well, one of the reasons they didn't have enough time is because states took a long time to decide whether they were going to but opt in or opt time. out. But they had extra time. They had extra time. They certainly believed it was constitutional, or they wouldn't have they, argued it before the Supreme Court. What work was they, going on during that period of time to get this ready for prime time? They had they extra time. They believed it was constitutional, but you may recall that in the Supreme Court opinion, the Supreme Court threw the Obama administration for a loop. They said that states didn't have to cover the Medicaid provisions, and a bunch of states, including my home state of Virginia, waited until the last minute so we're in order to figure states. out whether they were coming in or out. But you're absolutely right. They should have planned out for it more, <laughs> and, and just like the Bush administration should have 10 years ago, and I'm confident it'll be done in a month or two. Jamie, you have liberals that are now saying even the Republican governor sabotages website. And then we have our own... Not the website. But the plan. Okay. Uh, well, the, the thing is, we need to stop blaming people and fix it. Not only fix the website, fix the law. Well, the administration has pledged now to move the deadline and get it organized for folks. You know we'll stay on it, thanks to both of you. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you, okay. Jamie and Angela. Take care.